The change of command ceremony is a time-honored product of the rich heritage of naval tradition, which formally reaches the continuity of command to its officers and crew. Naval regulations dictate that the commanding officer and his relief shall conduct the change of command in front of all squadron personnel, and the heart of the ceremony is the formal transition of authority and responsibility to the relieving officer from the officer. On off button, couldn't find it. And there goes the speech. We're winning already. All right. Hey, thanks BTM. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, Bonnie Sparky, thank you uh, for having me here today and for letting me fly with you this morning. The best speakers are fast or funny. I've got nothing but, uh, but bad dad jokes, at least my daughter tells me, so I'm gonna strive for speed over humor. I also do think it's funny how they got the, the tallest uh, podium, I think, on the flight line for me here today. So uh, soon to be Skipper Sparky's going to make it look good. I don't. Bunny, it was an honor to be part of your last flight today uh, while you're in command of the Diamondbacks. I've thoroughly enjoyed serving with you here in Carrier Wing 5. I've learned a ton from you during our time together here. You've built a heck of a team, a team that the Air Wing, the Strike Group, 7th Fleet, and all the way up to the commando, com <laughs> commander of Indo-Pacific PACOM Indo-Pacific Command, rely upon to get the job done. Bunny is a tenured aviator here in the Air Wing. He was one of the few that even predates COVID here in CAG-5. He has led the Diamondbacks through three deployment cycles, including the last two that were truly unique. No one likes talking about COVID, but I'm going to just for a few minutes, all right? Uh, COVID first impacted CAG-5 when the Air Wing was in Guam for a detachment in 2020, just about two years ago today. When COVID made its appearance, Bunny was part of the leadership team that had to figure out how to get the air wing back to Iwakuni from Guam within 24 hours. After they got home, they had to figure out how to create a COVID-free bubble for 1,500 Iwakuni-based Batman sailors, then send all of them through Iwoto for FCOPs, which can only house about 600 people at a time, and eventually out to the carrier for carrier qualifications and deployment. They managed this COVID bubble for about eight straight weeks. Ever since, COVID has been the elephant in the room or in the hangar. Tracking vaccination status, arrival ROM, quarantine, various liberty policies, and COVID's impact to readiness has been a full-time job for most. On top of everything just mentioned, a commanding officer also has to ensure his or her command is ready to deploy. Bunny did just that. Under Bunny's leadership, the Diamondbacks prepared themselves in CAG-5 as a whole for battle. Last summer, CAG-5 and Ronald Reagan found ourselves unexpectedly deployed to the U.S. Central Command. The first time for CAG-5 since 2003, and the first time ever for the Diamondbacks while operating the Super Hornet. The Diamondbacks are the close air support, subject matter experts for Carrier Air Wing 5. They made sure we were all ready. Their efforts resulted in CAG-5 safely executing over 300 combat sorties, providing armed overwatch for the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan, and amazingly, the evacuation of ten, tens of thousands of Afghan citizens. The Diamondbacks were the first to launch on our arrival and the last section airborne on our final day in country. Bunny, thank you again for everything you have done for the Diamondbacks in CAG-5. Your inspired leadership reaches farther than you will ever know. I'm gonna go off script for a second here today, and, uh, and, and this is always a bad thing when I do this, but uh, I can say that Commander O'Hara uh, bleeds naval aviation. He cares more than anyone I've ever met, 
And uh, he showed that again this morning. Uh, when COVID first hit this squadron in, in uh, January of 2021, uh, when we got back from leave last year, Commander O'Hara stood the watch actually in the reading room for about 36 straight hours when, uh, when everyone had to scatter for a little bit. Uh, he cares very deeply about each and every one of you and each and every one of your families. And, uh, and Bunny, that, that's a unique uh, trait and, uh, and I really appreciate it. No one serves alone, back on script now. No one serves alone, uh, and you have had the support. Uh, we all have some sort of uh, support network. To the O'Hara family, thank you for your support uh, to Bunny, and thank you for the support, your support to our sailors. Sparky, I look forward to watching you lead the Diamondbacks into the future. You, Ashley, Rhodes, and Alexander are, a wonder, are wonderful people, and I'm confident the Diamondbacks are in good hands. Enjoy the ride, it goes by way too fast. Chucky, you're out there somewhere, I know it. Uh, welcome aboard, there he is. I hope you, Nicole, Caitlin, and Johnny enjoy your time here in Japan. It is a hard tour, but a very rewarding one. Bunny, thank you again. I appreciate everyone's time and attention. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the commanding officer, Strike Fighter Squadron 102, Commander Daniel Bunny O'Hara. Okay, I don't, I don't really know how to follow that, but uh, I think you are far too kind in your words. I hope, that I, I hope that you have learned as much from me as I have from you and your leadership. You truly care about the men and women of this air wing, and you teach that to us each and every day, and you certainly did as DCAG. You have made me a better man, much like the men and women of the Diamondbacks, certainly Tim and Ashley, and I will get back to script here shortly, but sir, I have learned a tremendous amount from you and I'm truly humbled to have served with you. DCAG, welcome. It's great to have you back. Really enjoyed our time at Top Gun together, and I know that you're gonna take this air wing to new heights. Badman, COs, and XOs, D or CAG said it best, you can't do this alone. You guys always had a, an ear, a voice. You would listen, you would give me guidance, you'd pump me up when I was down can't do this alone, and you guys are always there. It's been an honor to serve with you guys. To the Iwakuni families, and I've got something specific to all the families, it really is a giant family here. I, the thing I was the most nervous about coming to Japan was being in my mid-40s and single and feeling that I was going to be isolated and alone. And that was the last thing from the case. There are several families here in attendance, and I'm going to tell you exactly what it was that they did for me that made all of this even possible. To the Diamondback spouses, the sacrifices that you guys endure for the men and women behind you are unbelievable and immeasurable. The support and love that you provide to allow them to be the men and women that protect our nation, to go out holding the family together so there's something to come home back to, is far more of a sacrifice than any of us in uniform will ever know or endure, quite honestly. To the world's finest fighter squadron, what a ride after three years. I've got some specifics and I'll get to it, but I'm truly humbled to have been able to serve alongside each and every one of you. I am truly a better man because of everybody in this hangar bay. I came out here nervous. I didn't know what I was getting into. Felt like I wasn't prepared. And every day you guys gave me reassurance, hope, courage. Again, an ear to vent to, to get through all the challenges that we faced three years together. And all I wanted today, I, I'm not a big ceremonies guy. I really just wanted today to be about thanking everybody who even made this possible. For 20 years, 
the thing that I think I've learned the most, it's not the jets, it's not the flying, it's not the debts, the port calls, it's the people. It really is the men and women that you share these experiences and life with or what make this what it is. I've been truly humbled with the men and women I've had the chance to serve alongside. Names like Waldo Ewald, Trevor Estes, Eric Ilston, Brian Kesselring, Dallas Jamison, Adam Cohen, Tim Charlebois, Colonel Senna, my first air or uh, my first down wing in flight school, Butters, Vespa, and I could go on and on and on. They're some of the best friends a guy could ever have. Peer leadership is difficult and they would provide that when I needed it. And they were always there to bring me up when I was down. I'll never forget the tight merges, the days on the ski slopes, the cowboy time, clearly the flying. But I'm telling you, it's the men and women that make this all possible. And this is what I hope everybody walks away with. You're surrounded by some of the best people our country has to offer. And I hope that you take full advantage of that. <laughs> I'm fortunate enough today that my first CMC was gracious enough to come down from Yokosuka. O'Neill, I, I can't even begin to describe what it means to me that you're here and everything that you did for me. I wouldn't have gone through EWO 2020 without you. I certainly wouldn't, and I know you know that. The first appointment was tough. You taught me to look out and care for myself, man. You're a wonderful individual. Desiree, our ombudsman, thank you for being the support that our families needed here to get us through these challenging times, to be the conduit for Tim and I, to make sure that the men and women and their families were cared for. I know the challenges that you faced were, were immeasurable, but you did it with grace and you did it with style. And Tim and I are forever grateful for what you did for us to take care of our families. So when I mentioned it was about the people, <clears throat> there are some families here that that took me in as one of their own and made sure that I was never alone, that I always had a meal, support, friends and people to do stuff with. To Adam, Kristen, Ava Mae, Marley, Jack, the water dye, the Legos, the days at the park, the times on the boardwalk in Oceana with the the chocolate shakes all over your clothes. God, I'm so lucky that you guys came up here and we got to overlap again. To Shannon, Dave, Easton, Avery, you guys were fantastic neighbors and friends. Throwing the football, goofing about Harry Potter. You guys keeping me company. Shannon, to you. You allow me to be the, men, the man that these men and women deserve to stay late at work and I could come home and there was a meal in the refrigerator. I, I don't have the words. To Brent, Stacy, Evan, Quinn and Reese, the Jake was greeted me when I, when I first got here and made me feel welcome. They took me out, they showed me around Japan and they made me feel comfortable being overseas without my own family. The Evans family with Harry, Corey, Asher, and Everett, the trampoline days, the throwing them up in the air, the game nights. I'll never forget that stuff. And finally, I'll get to Tim, but Ashley, Rhodes, and Alexander. Two Christmases together, you opened your home to me. Getting to hold roads, read them books, put him to bed, take him to the park, carry him in the backpack on the hikes, 
getting to hold and feed Alexander. I love you guys. And Tim, you know who I am. You put up with me. You let me be me. You let me become the CEO that I wanted to be. Dude, you are ready for this job. You've been ready. And I want you to know, man, I'll always be here for you and your family. To the Diamondbacks, it's three years of memories. The ups and downs, the highs and lows, the positives, the negatives, all that type of stuff. I just want to say thank you for three wonderful years full of memories. I appreciate your patience and your understanding as Tim and I navigated this thing called command. I didn't know what I was getting into, but you made me a better person and I learned a tremendous amount from all of you. And I will carry that forward for the rest of my life. You guys are in extremely good hands with Tim and Lynn and John and his family. Lynn, you have been a godsend. Your energy, your excitement, your enthusiasm, and your care for the sailors is unbelievable. We are truly lucky to have you as a member of this team. I only wish I had more time with you. Our department heads are wonderful. You guys have done an amazing job mentoring the JOs into the lethal cadre of aviators that they are today. And I'm forever humbled to have served alongside you. C-Rock, thank you for putting up with me during the FAC A syllabus, all my rants in the jet, to do on my last flight. The chiefs and the ground officers are truly our backbone. I've learned so much from you on how to care and take care of the sailors to make sure that they succeed in life and we make the right decisions for the men and women of this organization. To the training officers, thank you for reinvigorating the desire to be a patch wearer. You know how important that is to me and I'm forever indebted to you for igniting that fire under this extremely talented J.O. Cadre. And finally, for the Diamondbacks to the Jopa. Nicole, a heartfelt thank you to you for even setting this up and the amount of effort that you put forth to make this day even possible. The J.O.s and the Sailors are the lifeblood of any organization. When I was down, when I was tired, your enthusiasm and your energy are what kept Tim and I going. I gave you the analogy of the human body yesterday, but it is the JOs and the sailors that are the heart and soul of any organization. I, flying has been my life, my passion. I love it with all my heart, but without you, it wouldn't be possible. Your blood, sweat, efforts, you going above and beyond allowed the men and women in the flight suits to do what they truly love to do for a living. So as I walk away, I want you to remember that this is a team sport. It's about teamwork. Nobody can do this alone. I certainly couldn't. I needed Tim. I needed Lynn. I needed O'Neill. We need each other. Please be there for one another to get through the challenges. I ask that you become a better man or woman on the backside of this experience to make sure that it was worthwhile. But enjoy yourself along the way. I certainly did. Tim and I will know that we truly did our job correctly and we did it properly when we see your names on the chief select or the command screen list in a couple years. I look forward to seeing the names of Nordley, Overcash, Burns, Robinson, Vermilier, Chen, McGowan on those command screen lists. But I couldn't finish if I didn't thank my family. They couldn't be here today, obviously, due to the travel restrictions, and I haven't seen them since December of 2018, so I think it's time for me to go home. They've been my biggest advocates since I was just a little boy. They took me to see Top Gun on the first day that it came out, the air shows, my grandfather taking me up on his little plane, and here I am 20 years later, able to live my dreams as a child. How many people can say that? They've been my biggest cheerleaders and my biggest advocates, no matter how much of a misfit or I misbehaved, they were always there for me. 
and they never let that scared little boy who stared at the skyward wishing he was part of it give up on his dreams. Mom, Dad, Ryan, Mike, Rachel, Lori, Jim, Sandy, Grandma and Grandpa. This tour was for you. This career was for you. I'm sorry for all the birthdays, holidays, special occasions that I've missed. However, I'm finally coming home. I love you all. Thank you for making this life possible for me. Will all military guests please rise for the presentation of war by Captain Sweeney, Commander Carrier, Air Wing 5. Attention to award. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Meritory Service Medal to Commander Daniel K. O'Hara, United States Navy, for services as set forth in the following citation. Four, outstanding meritorious service while serving as commanding officer and executive officer in Strike Fighter Squadron 102 from February 2019 to February 2022. Commander O'Hara's superior leadership guided the largest squadron in Carrier Air Wing 5 through eight joint and combined exercises, four detachments, and four deployments on board USS Ronald Reagan. Commander O'Hara's inspirational leadership transformed Strike Fighter Squadron 102 into the most combat effective unit in Carrier Air Wing 5. As a Carrier Air Wing, Five strike lead coordinator. He skillfully guided the entire carrier air wing into combat operations during the closing months of Operation Freedom Sentinel, where his squadron accomplished a 100% combat sortie completion rate, providing armed overwatch during the critical period surrounding the retrograde of American forces and non combat evacuation in Afghanistan. Fostering a climate of by the book maintenance practices, his leadership yielded the command's first pass pass score in nine years during the 2020 and 2021 Commander Strike Fighter Wing Pacific material condition inspection and enabled the command's safe execution of 4,272 sorties, encompassing 8,655 flight hours with an impressive 95% sortie completion rate. Commander O'Hara's exceptional professionalism, personal initiative, and loyal devotion to duty reflected great credit upon himself and were keeping the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, signed MP Donnelly, Rear Admiral, United States Navy. Military guests, please be seated. All right, I will now read my orders. Beeper's order number 0312. When properly relieved, detach VFA 102 and report to the Joint Staff J8, Washington, D.C. I will now read my orders. Pupers order number 3019, when directed, reports commanding officer of VFA 102 as, as his relief. Sir, I relieve you. I've been properly relieved. Sir, I have assumed command of VFA 102. Very well. Congrats. Appreciate it, sir. Congrats. Thank you, sir.
Squadron IDs. So a uh, Wiley Skipper taught me a while ago to bring my own speech, not put it in the podium, so. I will unfold that. Before I start, I'd like to say thank you to my wife, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, numerous deployments. I moved to Japan. COVID, long hours. You wondering why Bunny and I are always hanging out at work. You put your career on hold and you deal with everything the Navy gives us in stride. Thank you for being my everything. And thank you for being Danny's surrogate mom. Rhodes, Alex, I know you guys won't remember this, but I still want to say, whatever path you choose for your life, your father will always be proud of you. Chucky, Nicole, Kaylin, Johnny, welcome to Iwakuni. FDNF is a speeding train. We look forward to having you here. It's a blast. Ladies and gentlemen, behind me, you may notice aircraft 101. Typically, 100 is our CAG bird. 102 is the CO's bird. On the name, or on the side of 101, are the names of air crew who have won distinguished flying cross while flying diamondback hardware in Afghanistan. In fact, the two behind me, Lieutenant Commander Guido Guyman and Lieutenant Commander Ewald, both represent a skipper of mine and both of our CAG together in CAG 1. Bunny and I know them well. On the other side is Lieutenant Commander Guido Guyman and again, and Lieutenant Cosma Dupree, a former training officer and skipper of mine. I'd like to share a little story about them. On 16 November 2001, Hamid Karzai entered what was known as a Taliban stronghold of Terran Kaut, along with U.S. Army Special Forces from ODA 574. The Taliban marshaled a force estimated to exceed 300 men and dozens of vehicles to attack the town and Hamid Karzai. Acting in support of that ODA team as a FAC A, Guido and Cosmo coordinated and controlled 12 aircraft and guided weapon deliveries for more than four hours. They repelled the surging ground attacks, destroying 30 vehicles and a significant number of enemy casualties. Guido and Cosmo saved Hamid Karzai's life that day, but their actions, they didn't do so alone. It takes a team to fight, it takes a team to win. Diamondback Air Crew wouldn't have gone flying that day without Diamondback maintainers maintaining every combat system in that aircraft. Diamondback maintainers would not have been working without supply ensuring they had the parts, without admin ensuring everyone was getting paid, without intel providing targets. Every individual has a role to play within fighting 102. And that spirit was carried that day and before us. That spirit started with the Vietnam War. That spirit continued when we opened Afghanistan. And most recently, that spirit we all were part of as we closed out Afghanistan with some of us on that final flight. When it comes to fighting spirit, Danny embodies what, is meant, what, it, what it means to be within fighting 102. Danny's family, Kevin, Diane, Ryan, I know you'll be watching this at home. Know that your son's fighting spirit inspired all of us to simply be better. Whether it was in the jet, fixing aircraft, or living life, he is a tremendous human being and you should be proud of your son. Danny, on a daily basis, you put on a master class in leadership. I'm thankful for your mentorship along the way. Although I'm sure strike leads under instruction throughout the air wing will be happy the ghost of Iwakuni no longer rages in their red air presentations, I will forever miss our conversations together about life, liberty, and happiness. As a collective people amongst four deployed naval forces and living here in Iwakuni, we all have to fight. 
The fights range from the mundane to complex. They range from dealing with the movers on an overseas tour to leading a 30-plane joint strike off the ship to getting an appointment at medical. But each and every one of us continues to fight. Nothing comes easy. Respect must be earned. As a squadron and an air wing, we continue to fight. We fight through tri-sided operations. We fight through, fight through COVID. We fight through the commissary being out of milk. Every day, I am blown away by the fighting spirit demonstrated by the men and women of Fighting 102. This very week, we, looked, we worked long hours to get eight aircraft up for Guam. At one point, going 12 on, 12 off to get the fleet where it needed to be. Many of you individually fought to get 101 up in the air after being a long-term downer. A2 Yazel, AM2 Farrell, I see you. Two separate issues. We're keeping 101 flight controls on the ground. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the entire squadron for what you've done. It took a team effort to get our war chariots ready for the fly-off, and we accomplished it together. We are fighting 102. Together, there is no mountain we cannot climb, no problem we cannot solve. Together, I'm looking forward to Guam, cruise, and whatever else may come our way. CAG, DCAG, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, wobbly, I present the men and women of Fighting 102. I serve proudly along each and every one of you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. You are cordially invited to join us for refreshments here in the hangar. Squadron, attention. Dismissed. <laughs>